All right, ladies and gentlemen, gonna make a quick follow-up video to the whole uh, S O M spell power versus um, I mean S O R spell power versus S O M debate, um, <clears throat> and mostly looking at like uh, exactly what's going on mathematically uh, to cause this trend in the first place. So in the previous video, I looked at it with existing gear possibilities at level forty. Um, but that's not really telling us what the thing is going to look like uh, going into the future and why SOR um, starts outperforming uh, SOM um, as, as more and more spell power, more and more critical strike, more and more hit chance, more and more just everything starts getting uh, added to, 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 to the equation. So I uh, spent a few hours last night before sleeping trying to figure out exactly how to explain this. And the best possible way to explain this is uh, basically a theoretical. Um, I'll do the TLDR uh, uh, first. The TLDR on the subject is that um, SOM, <clears throat> Seal of Martyrdom Paladin, uh, if you... I guess we should just do the hypothetical, sheesh. All right, so here's the hypothetical. The hypothetical is, let's say you're using Seal of Martyrdom Paladin, and you hit the 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 ultimate um, uh, break point for the build, and the ultimate break point for for such a build would be that you're critting constantly with the build, so much so that every single GCD of yours is either a holy shock or an exorcism, and you don't have any uh, free GCDs basically to do anything else. Right? The crits are coming in so fast and so frequently from Seal of Martyrdom. Uh, that you're just permanently uh, holy shocking and exorcism, uh, exorcisming all over the place. Well, the question you then have to ask yourself is uh, how much spell power ratio is flowing out of this paladin and into the enemy? <clears throat> we can look at the effects of like you know attack power and, and SOM and, and sheath of light and all that stuff in a second. But the question would be if if I'm if I'm doing nothing but but uh, spamming Holy Shock on cooldown, and Exorcism on cooldown, every single GCD, what, how much of my uh, spell power ratio is flowing out into the enemy? I end up doing this a lot in, in PvP uh, with SOR and spell power builds, so we're going to do it uh, here real fast. And the answer to this is you get 40% spell power ratio from Exorcism, and then Holy Shock has a 43% spell power ratio behind it. Um, if we add those together, it ends up being 83 uh, but then we have to divide it. Uh, uh, we have to divide it by two to get the average. All right, cool. Uh, but then we have to also divide it by uh, 1.5, and uh, that's because it's not um, a per second spell power ratio flowing out of the enemy at a 1.5 second GCD. So we divide it by uh, 1.5 second GCD, and we get the actual amount of spell power ratio flowing out of us and into the enemy uh, per second. So what this will mean is if we put 100, uh, plus 100 spell power on the SOM Paladin, we can expect to get around about 27 uh, a, a, a DPS out of that um, effectively in the grand scheme of things. Um, this uh, number does not take into consideration a few elements uh, that in my mind kind of cancel each other out at the end of the day. Uh, which is why I'm saying 27% spell power ratio and not this 27.6666 repeating percent. Um, issue number one is uh, not all of your spells are going to hit the target um, unless you find a way to get spell hit capped uh, while having Sheath of Light at the same time, which uh, should be very difficult uh, uh, versus bosses. Um, there's other elements where you're never going to have 100% up time on the... the uh, on, on, on the GCDs, just RNGs is just going to poop on you every now and then, whether you like it or not. Um, the amount of critical strike you would need to get 100% uptime is just absolutely ridiculous and probably not worth your time. You're probably better off getting a spell power. Um, the last one is, uh, so those are the negatives uh, driving it down. But the positives driving it up are would be, you know, critical strike chance, right, on these spells uh, would generate uh, a higher sp uh, spell power ratio. But in general, we'll just get a rough estimate and we'll, you know, about 27% uh, cent spell power ratio flowing out of the SOM Paladin into the target um, per second. So, and of course, if you have 600 spell power, it would be, you know, almost 30% of that um, would be uh, your raw DPS gain from, from that spell power. If you look at SOR, however, um, you see uh, an almost identical story um, because these numbers don't change. And SOR looks a little bit different because um, you don't need to go anywhere. Uh, you don't need to go. How do I put this? 
Uh, do I want to even bring that up right now? No, I don't. All right, so let's just look at the spell power ratio, and I'll hopefully be able to remember to bring up that point really fast. Um, so the spell power ratio flowing out of SOR and into the target is almost identical um, if they're using some sort of judgment on cooldown. So, for example, your uh, um, Judgment of Righteousness has like a 50% spell power ratio behind it. Your Consecration has like a 37% spell, uh, I mean, by bad, a 35% spell power ratio behind it. And then, of course, Exorcism and Holy Shock have the exact same spell power ratio behind it. And uh, the Holy Grail of the SOR Paladin is that, um, just like the SOM Paladin, uh, you're just pushing GCDs all the time, and they have an average of, you know, whatever the hell that was. Uh, I could literally take the average if, if, if you wanted to. But it, it would be hard to do, right? Because uh, Consecration is going to be on an 8 second cooldown. Judgment of Righteousness, in theory, is going to be on an 8 second cooldown uh, by the time you get some talent points uh, into her. Literally, your talent point build would be uh, 31 into Holy Shock. Um, I do believe uh, 13 into Prot, just uh, deep enough that you can get uh, 3 points into Improved Righteous Fury. And then uh, your remaining 7 points, I do believe. Yes. Yeah, your remaining seven points uh, literally are let you go deep in, enough into the ret tree to remove two seconds off of your Judgment of SOR cooldown. So that would be, your build would literally be uh, 31, uh, 13, and then a seven. Um, but, so all that told, it's still only going to be about a 27% spell power ratio flowing out of the SOR Paladin uh, in GCD terms per second. Uh, but then you have to look at Seal of Righteousness, and Seal of Righteousness from a spell power um, DPS ratio is absolutely not screwing around. Um, <clears throat> so I still don't know in Season of Mastery if the one-hander is a 20% or if she actually kept her 18.666% uh, spell power ratio. Um, but there's so many factors here that are a are, are real pain to try to calculate um, this in the grand scheme of things. So, for example, in theory, you're using a 1.3 second speed weapon. All right, that makes it pretty easy. Um, you're going to have some missed chance in the boss and, unless you, you hit hit, hit, uh, hit cap, which you're probably not going to do. Um, but it's also, it might be possible to at the same time. Okay. Um, there's also, uh, is there a druid around giving you wind fury? I haven't tested a seal of righteousness is uh, uh, times two hit hits per attack causes a wind fury to times two proc. In my experience, it, it kind of seems to because a wind fury uh, procs for me all the time when I'm using seal of righteousness. I don't know if it's the same way for seal of martyrdom. Uh, judging by how seal of martyrdom mechanics work, I, I would kind of say no. Uh, but seal of martyrdom is all over the place with her mechanics. So it's just like, ugh, whatever. Um, but Seal of Righteousness traditionally does times two proc any on-hit effects, and Wind Fury, Lord knows, is a weapon on-hit effect. So um, she's even classified as a weapon enchantment in, in the grand scheme of things. Coding, I do believe, wise. All right, so very... And then the question is, do you have any kind of, like, world buff or 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 item that's increasing your attack speed? Like the, the Nomergon chickens or a, nor, a normal battle chicken or uh, the, uh, the the world buff that increases it by 10%. Like, Lord knows what the hell, uh, what the hell you have going on there. Uh, but very, very quickly, everything is good. That 1.3 weapon speed is probably going to turn into a one-second weapon speed um, in the grand scheme of things. And so, since I don't know if it's 18% spell power ratio, I don't know if it's 20% spell power ratio for one-hander, um, I do know in traditional classic it's 18.66% spell power ratio, um, I'm just going to get a rough estimate of SOR's um, uh, spell power to DPS conversion per second at about 18. And here you can start seeing the comparison. Um, what this means is, uh, since these are both multipliers of 9, is that Seal of Righteousness alone just on its own with the fastest one-handed weapon that you can possibly get your hands on wielded as, as properly as it can be wielded in a raid is going to do two-thirds of the spell power ratio damage dps per second uh as be clicking our uh, um, exorcism and holy shock over and over and over again on cooldown that is objectively terrifying and it gets worse because we still need to add the 27 to that because Seal of Righteousness just thunking away is is not on a GCD. So basically, that's that that's how you end up with um, the SOR Paladin has this massive 
um, 45 or higher spell power ratio per second that is flowing out of it into the enemy compared to the seal of martyrdom's uh, 27 uh, percent so basically what this means is that if i have 100 spell power um, if I give 100 plus 100 spell power to both these paladins, one will gain 45 DPS from it, and the other one will gain uh, 27 uh, DPS from it. Um, this only gets worse um, as time goes on. I'll have to pause the video here and, and bring up Wowhead in, in a second. Uh, I forgot to, and I forgot I actually needed it. Um, but this gets worse <clears throat> when, when you really start uh, dig delving deeper into this. Uh, because what ends up happening is you have to ask yourself, how much critical strike do each of these builds need before they begin to hit diminishing returns? And more importantly, uh, then the diminishing, well, the diminishing returns are actually more important than this final thing. Before the diminishing return starts, gets it because the diminishing returns are not going to be consistent. They're going to start scaling. Um, and then, of course, the cap uh, is that you're getting so many crits coming in that you're just permanently spamming um, a, a, a spell cast every GCD. And uh, unironically, it's actually a lot closer than you think it would be uh, for a variety of reasons. So, for example, um, Seal of Martyrdom, assuming you have a, a, a lot of, of hit chance, right? Like you've picked up like, you know, 3% hit from your gear. You've got three points in precision, which we will eventually have um, in, in this build, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, you're pretty much hit capped when uh, uh, swinging at a boss of Seal of Martyrdom. Um, your break point for critical strike. Uh, let me actually write this real fast here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's get some red. Yeah, yeah, red's good. Red's good. Uh, yeah, definitely want the 24. Um, SOM's break cap for critical strike is seems to be somewhere around 15 to, to uh, uh, 20%. You start getting significantly noticeable diminishing returns when you factor in um, uh, wind fury and, and all the other stuff. At around about uh, 15%, it starts hitting you pretty hard. And then by the time you get up to like 20% uh, uh, spell crit, you're really noticing the diminishing returns. And then when you get to 25% spell crit, you're probably uh, 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 crit capped um, um, for the purposes of the build. Like any more crit is not going to benefit um, Art of War whatsoever, um, uh, even remotely noticeably. Um, and then crit chance is only going to benefit your white damage and your, your SOR damage. I mean, my bad, your SOM damage. Okay, well, that's interesting. That's an extremely low number to get for the build. Like a shockingly low number uh, uh, to get for the build. Especially when you factor in, like, you know, um, um, oils, like, you know, mongoose elixir. Uh, the build itself uh, uh, just wants to have... You can... You can uh, in, any paladin uh, can get 20% uh, critical strike on their paladin um, while being in super heavy optimized gear for SOM without breaking a sweat. The reason for that is because you're wearing strength, agility, uh, um, a stamina, a spell power. So no, strength, agility, intellect, stamina, spell power, uh, critical strike gear. So that would literally be your Avengers. That would be your um, uh, your Marshall's gear. When I pull up Wowhead, it'll become uh, apparent. All right, so that's interesting. So you need almost no critical strike whatsoever to actually start hitting the diminishing returns and then to get uh, uh, crit capped. Um, SOR, you'd think it would might be like twice as much as that because people keep trying to tell me that SOM, you know, blah, 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 blah. It, 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 it has twice the pro amount of procs, yada, yada, yada. It's, it's not true uh, when you finally do the math and see a casino and, and all that stuff. Um, and it gets worse because um, the more you fix Seal of Martyrdom, Seal of the Casino issues by getting uh, more hit chance and, and, and so forth, um, she, she just requires less crit. So there's basically two ways to fix the Seal of Martyrdom's uh, um, problem. You get more critical strike or you get more hit chance. And uh, honestly, you're probably better off getting just more crit because it's easier to find. So anyways, um, SOR, it, um, she starts getting diminishing returns around 20% and then she caps out um, somewhere around 25%. Uh, uh, She's like, she requires something like 5% uh, more critical strike then seal the martyrdom before she really starts uh, uh, hitting uh, uh, diminishing returns noticeably. And she probably tops off at 30% at, at crit. So to give you an idea with seal martyrdom, again, uh, you started getting diminishing returns at 15%. 
Um, she probably uh, hits her optimization at 20% roundabouts. And then if you are a psychopath, you can go up to uh, 20%, even though it's diminishing returns. Uh, but at that point, anything past, uh, my bad, past 25% is, is just useless kind of thing. SOR is in the exact same position, but it's like 5% uh, more critical strike. The reason why it's such a low number is because judgment of righteousness is not screwing around and consecration is also not screwing around. And when these two things uh, are both on eight second cooldowns, um, you basically, uh, it, it's basically worth like an extra, like, you know, 5% uh, critical strike in the grand scheme of things. So uh, this one doesn't uh, really have any extra buttons to press. Uh, consecration is kind of there um, for the build. Um, so you could uh, press it, but uh, you might as well just lean into the seal of martyrdom uh, type thing. All right, so let me pause the video and I'll pull up um, Wowhead and we can look at the other factor uh, real fast here. Because this, this other factor is probably even more important than everything that I've, I've even said up to this point. Um, because you're going to have questions about, okay, uh, Pally Time, uh, what about SOM scaling with attack power, right, and, and, and critical strike? Surely if I stack a bunch of attack power, I'll get a bunch of spell power, and the double dipping um, is better than just the, the spell power on the SOR. Surely that's the way it works. Uh, but then Classic WoW, of course, is going to tell you to uh, basically get bent. All right, we got WoW head up. Uh, let's go to the gear planner. Let's pull up at least one of these two paladins. Uh, the human paladin is usually my experimental one. I'm going to go all the way up to level 60. And we are going to look at something as simple as Avengers gear. Um, actually, I don't want to look at, uh, at a piece of Avengers gear. I want to look at something very, very basic. Like, like of the bear. What the hell do you want? Okay. Let me pause the video again. All right, that was entertaining. How about we don't do that again? Was I moving too quickly? Is it like you're a bot, you're clicking too fast? Or did I hit something I wasn't supposed to? Weird. Uh, I'm looking for the piece of gear that I know would be the perfect example. I, uh, let's stick with plate. I think it's gloves. Gloves, yeah, level 60 gloves has the perfect example, if I recall correctly. It's not Peacekeepers, it's something in Encourage. Yeah, they're high-level Encourage gloves. No, 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 not the ooze. Strength, stamina, increase healing done by spells and effects, yeah. Judgment Gauntlets, okay, that's cute. Come on, scroll down. Nope, Judgment Gauntlets isn't, isn't the right one. Uh, this might be close. There's one that competes with that. I'm trying to find it. Sheath of Light, yeah, here it is. Damage done by healing spells. So it's Gauntlets of Shining Light, boom. And then I compare it specifically to the other Encourage Gauntlets. I think it's a pro... No, it's not a prophecy. Okay, Gauntlets is the Righteous Champion. I'm pretty sure that that's how it works, right? Damage and healing, damage and healing... Stamina, strength, agility, yada, yada, yada. Let's see here. You just have critical strike for no good reason. Why do I have gauntlets of shining light on? Who does this? This is the wrong gauntlets, dummy. Uh, let's look at Zulgarub. Uh, Encourage, gauntlets of steadfast determination. No. So we got the righteous champion. Let's just throw righteous champion on. Come on. Let's do it. The other one's like something crusader, I think. Redeemed Prophecy? No. Come on, where are the Crusader Gloves? Where are they at? Gauntlets of Annihilation, Ice Paint, Righteous Champion, Gloves, uh, Immobile Swarm, Peacekeeper Gauntlets. Like, damn it, where the hell are these gloves? This is actually pissing me off. Because I spent like... Is this it? No, it's Marshall's Gloves. What are we doing here? Redeemed Prophecy. I'm just going to keep looking until I find these damn gloves. Was that it? That's Judgment Gloves. What are we doing here? I'm not wasting so much time at this. This is so annoying. Ice Bane, Redemption Gloves. Gauntlets of Annihilation. Ah, where are these gloves? I'm going to look up Crusader. This is starting to piss me off. Crew. Okay, it doesn't exist. Okay, well, I'll just talk real fast. Jeez, that's making me so angry. Just waste so much time. I also do of the bear real fast here. 
Okay. So, <clears throat> remove that, please. Thank you very much. Okay, so here we have a piece of green gear that says something stupid like, actually, let's get Gauntlets of Annihilation. That, that's a good example. <clears throat> so it has to do with stat prioritization in classic World of Warcraft. So you probably noticed this by now, but if you have a piece of gear that says something like, um, let's say it says uh, 40 strength, okay? So this gear has 40 strength on it and no other stat. Um, if that gear was instead like a stamina uh, strength piece of gear, like, you know, it's two stats, it wouldn't be uh, 20 strength and uh, uh, um, 20 um, stamina. It would be closer to uh, 30 strength and, and, and 30 stamina, if that makes any sense. Um, it, just, it just has more stats when they're, when they're spread around all over the place. It's one of the reasons why the Avengers gear and the Marshals gear are so amazing for Paladin because um, of, of just the sheer spread of stats and everything. So it's got strength, agility, stamina, intellect, spirit, um, damage and healing, and then critical strike. And this gear is, is just abundant for, um, for Paladins in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Crusader gear um, follows a very similar um, uh, lines where it's like strength, stamina, intellect. Oh, it's the belt. You bastard. Okay. Um, fallen Emperor. Yeah. Increase healing. No, not Fallen Emperor. Fallen Crusader? No. Onslaught Girdle. Onslaught Girdle is the other one. Belt of Redeemed Crusader. Where's the other one? Okay, we're almost there. Ugh, so annoying. But th there was one, uh, there was two pieces of gear that showed it almost exactly. I can't remember what they are. So basically, the only difference between the two pieces of gear was that one has 18 strength and the other one has 15 strength, but one has like slightly more, sp like four more spell power than the other. Um, the TLDR here is that uh, uh, the game counts um, spell power as like an additional stat. So for example, if you had a piece of gear uh, that said um, uh, 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 like, like 20 strength and 20 stamina, um, and you went to a piece of gear that just had, um, like, stamina spell power, like, on, on the same level, right? It wouldn't say uh, 20 stamina, 20 spell power. Um, it actually increases the spell power by a pretty hefty margin, uh, somewhere in the vicinity of, of, of about 30%. So that same piece of gear at the same item level would say 20 stamina, and then it would be uh, 26 spell power. Um, because it would convert the 20 strength uh, into 130% um, um, uh, spell power. So it would end up with uh, uh, 26 spell power. This uh, mathematical figure um, also continues uh, when you go from, like, you know, uh, three stats, uh, or two stats to three stats. The point is um, that if you look at Paladin gearing with Sheath of Light... Um, you're going to want a piece of gear that, that basically uh, has the following on it. You're going to want strength, you're going to want stamina, and you're going to want spell power. And then anything else on that piece of gear is just um, um, extra. So, for example, Avengers Crown is amazing. Uh, Marshals is also amazing. Uh, the Field Marshals plate uh, basically says the exact same thing. You see she has strength, she has stamina, she has intellect, and she's got spell power, she's got critical strike. Um, yada, yada, yada. But basically, you got the strength, you got the stamina, and you got the spell power. SOM likes that. Um, S, uh, SOR likes that. SOM likes that because you're going to hit your crit, uh, crit cap so quickly, you really don't care about critical strike chance on your gear, even though almost all this gear does come with 1% increased crit, which is part of the reason you're going to hit it so quickly. Um, <clears throat> another good example would be uh, Judgment Crown. Uh, Judgment Crown doesn't have Critical Strike on it, but you can see she's got Strength, she's got Stamina, and she's got Spell Power, right? Um, so what this basically means is you, you don't want gear that is just uh, pure Strength. That's a bad idea. You don't want gear that is uh, Stamina, uh, Spell Power. That's also a bad idea. Uh, um, not Stamina. Yeah, Stamina, Spell Power. That's a bad idea. You specifically want gear that has Strength, Stamina, and then Spell Power, and then anything else on top of that is, is just... Um, icing on the cake and that's specifically because of, of the way the stats uh, get distributed 
So the ideal piece of gear for an SOR uh, tanking Paladin and an SOM tanking Paladin is basically identical, and that's just strength, stamina, spell power, strength, stamina, spell power, um, plate mail. Anything, anything else on top of that, if it's got critical strike, if it's got hit, that's just uh, uh, bonus music. Um, but what this basically does mean, however, is... Uh, how do I put this? The Paladin that synergizes with spell power in SOD is going to significantly outperform the one that doesn't um, because of, of, of how the, the, the stat uh, dispersion goes. All right, so... Um, right. Do, 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 do. Uh, so, for example, we can do... A, let's do a comparison... So we had that Judgment Crown, and we'll compare it to Avengers, which is Avengers is supposed to be significantly better. So for every point of strength, it's 0.75 spell power. That's uh, with King's uh, buff, and that's with the uh, five talents in um, uh, Divine Might. Um, so i got to go times uh, 0.725. This will give me how much spell power I get from this uh, 20 attack power. I mean, this 20, so this, this 20 strength on the Avengers Crown is giving me 14.5 spell power. And of course, the, the the damn thing comes with uh, 23 spell power already uh, built into the into the thing. So this entire item here is going to give me a, a little bit of, of attack power, but she's going to give me uh, 37 spell power. Um, Judgment Crown is also not messing around on the subject. She's got 17 uh, strength, so we go 17 times uh, 0.725. That's how much spell power I'm getting from the strength. Then I add the spell power to it of a whopping 32. And you can see this one is also giving me a fairly significant and hefty uh, spell power bonus. But if you go back to our SOM versus SOR paladins as they begin scaling up with like more and more gear, more and more spell power, what you're going to find is that they're going to be wearing almost identical gear. Like one of them will probably be wearing almost full tier two, and the other one will probably be wearing almost. Um, uh, full Avengers. Uh, let me pause the video a sec, and I'll pull up. Um, I, I did uh, some a while ago, but this was only for PvP. Yeah, okay, I pulled it off of Discord here really fast. Uh, when you go here. Right, so when Sheath of Light came out, me being a Paladin pvp -er, I immediately started tinkering around with uh, what does it look like on Tier 1? What does it look like on Tier 2? What does it look like with the uh, the Paladin hybrid build? What does it look like when we're wearing Avengers? Um, but this was pure PvP, which means there was a heavy focus on uh, stamina. Um, specifically, uh, the rings and the neck piece have no spell power on them whatsoever. They're basically just stamina stat sticks. So it's like uh, there's 24 stamina and almost no, they're all they're all tank rings. So it's like um, what is it like Ring of Reckoning, um, Ring of the Fallen uh, Defender? I think it's like 24 spell power and like a, a 24 stamina and like 1% hit and like maybe 1% crit. Um, and then, uh, like, Mark a Cthune or something for the neck. So, like, you know, 24 um, stamina, like, maybe a little bit of, of attack power, but, like, dodge and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> however, you can see here very quickly... Let's look at it really fast. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, tier 2 um, has the most spell power. Uh, specifically, the spell power is located uh, right here. So she has 464 spell power in Tier 2, uh, but you come down here and you look at Avengers, and Avengers only has, like, what is that, 33 less spell power on it. Um, but Avengers has way more crit chance. She gets up to 21% um, uh, critical strike chance. You'll also notice that Tier 2 actually has a lot of attack power, um, but she's very, very low in the crit. Tier 2 only had 13% uh, crit um, when the thing was built out. Um, that's not tier two having a uh, uh, thirteen percent crit. That's my reckoning paladin specifically in this gear, uh, which the reckoning paladin uh, has uh, um, the five percent crit out of the ret tree, which is why it's uh, up there at thirteen percent. Um, all these paladins had might of minithil, which is another plus two percent crit. So you can very easily whack off um, uh, seven percent crit and get the uh, um, and then and get the the base kind of crit that's going on there. So tier two has like no crit on it whatsoever, and you can see the crit is literally identical to tier three, which is uh, doubly telling you that um, a tier two has no agility or critical strike on her whatsoever. Um, 
despite all that, she still ended up with like 600 attack power compared to Avengers and the hybrids um, 700 attack power. And uh, at the end of, of the day, um, their spell power is virtually identical. Um, basically, what this is telling you from a tanking perspective, from a tanking transition, is that in BWL, your best tanking gear is basically some variant of Tier 2, um, preferably with a, a, a Marshall's mix, if they allow Marshall's gear at that, at that time. And then by the time Avengers comes out, uh, Avengers is basically just your best tanking gear in the entire game. Uh, you could argue, yeah, 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 this, it's not even uh, really comparable. The hybrid gear got really good HP. This Again, this is all PvP. Crit was good, attack power was good, but the spell power uh, suffered. You had like 100% uh, less spell power. Um, fun fact, though, you're going to get so much critical strike from like world buffs and just all the buffs that you take into raid in, in general um, that 21% critical strike is actually like way too much critical strike. Um, for for any Paladin build, um, SOM or SOR, it's it's actually kind of nuts, uh, which might mean that um, Tier 2 is, is just the way to go, like, period, end of story. She's just going to have slightly more spell power, like, literally, like, 7% uh, more spell power, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, the effects of Sheath of Light on Paladin gearing were kind of fascinating in the grand scheme of things. I was mostly, from a PvP perspective, I was mostly interested in the plus healing. And uh, to watch um, tier, th tier 3 with its whopping 540 uh, plus healing um, get beat down like a redheaded stepchild by uh, Sheath of Light um, compared to all these other Paladins what was, was just disturbing. <laughs> she has almost no more she has barely more plus healing than an Avengers suit like what the hell yeah that, that was uh that was pretty disturbing mm. but basically what this means is that um almost all this critical strike goes to waste um in any build uh you're gonna possibly use so in theory it's looking like currently tier two is just your 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 best possible gear. Um, if you have a bunch of world buffs, um, if you're planning on dying in raid um, a lot, uh, which Lord knows I am planning on dying or in raid a lot, then this uh, critical strike uh, becomes important because you won't have uh, world buffs uh, to really carry you. Um, the last thing to examine is you might think to yourself that um, surely pally time uh, this. Surely uh, SOR's synergy with attack power, uh, no, not bad, SOM synergy with attack power will overcome the literal two-thirds increase uh, of a spell power um, a DPS uh, that SOR uh, does. You know, maybe you're thinking like, like, like that is the thing. Um, that's why I brought up the gearing, um, and I'm just pointing out that uh, the effects of Sheetha, look at this. This build has 600 uh, attack power. This build has 700 attack power. The difference in attack power between the builds is almost non-existent. The difference in spell power uh, be between the builds um, is almost non-existent. So if you're thinking to yourself that in the future, um, the spell power build is going to have low attack power and the attack power build is going to have lots of attack power, uh, that's literally not how it's going to work. And that's not how it's going to work because the best possible gear that we can wear is going to be strength, stamina, spell power. Strength, stamina, spell power. Strength, stamina, spell power. And that's just how it is. Um, SOM is is just not going to carry uh, the day there uh, whatsoever. Uh, we can do the math on that really fast if you like. Um, <clears throat> like like what, what are the gains here exactly? Uh, so let's do... Do I want to do an Avengers? No, Avengers has too much crit. Let's do a, a, a tier two um, a comparison really fast here. We can, we might be able to do an Avengers, but let's just do tier two really fast here. Um, so SOR is going to look at this spell power, and he's going to be like, uh, the SOR build is going to look at that spell power and be like, yeah, I'm going to take literally um, uh, forty five percent of that, and that's DPS. So this 424 spell power with Sheath of Light is worth 208 
uh, DPS for the SOR build. And then you basically just, uh, um, you know, wa uh, smack your hands together and you say done and dusted, right? Done. Easy. Easy peasy math. The SOR build uh, by uh, SOM build by comparison would go four, six, four um, times uh, uh, point uh, seven, two, seven. So it, it, it converts uh, about 125 of that into DPS. Let me pull up another calculator here. Boop, boop, boop. So you have to understand the white damage is going to be identical. And now we're just looking at the effects of um, Seal of Martyrdom. Um, uh, basically, the additional 75 DPS, it's actually more than that. It was like 208, right? Jesus. So it's like 82 DPS um, more. That's just pure SOR. That's pure Seal of Righteousness, um, um, two-thirds uh, additional spell power um, outflow. Um, now let's see if SOM can even remotely um, compete with that. Uh, now you might be thinking uh, maybe the weapon uh, will do more damage. Uh, if they want to give us a weapon uh, that's better than Hammer of Righteous uh, Judgment, that's fine. The, uh, um, the only one that's better currently is a Flurry Axe. Um, with her proc, she's effectively uh, 1 point, um, uh, three second speed at 1.5 seconds. Um, so you gain a little bit of, of DPS there. And then there's like literally no replacement for the Flurry Axe ever until you're in an axe and you get access to uh, Hungering Cold, which is the best one-handed weapon in the entire game. Plus six uh, uh, sword skill, armor, stamina, 1.5 speed, and a whopping 73 DPS. Um, and even she is not a 1.3 speed weapon. And if you actually do the math on um, Flurry Axe compared to Hungering Cold... Um, round about anything over, if I recall correctly, it is, uh, let me think. I want to say f somewhere around 550 spell power. Yeah. Um, which is very easy to get with, uh, Judgment of Crusader, right? Because Judgment of Crusader, uh, will put like, you know, uh, 220, uh, spell power, um, on the target, um, especially if you got like uh, the Marshall's gloves and you got three points uh, into improving it and you have the Libram for it, uh, Judgment of the Crusader uh, gets up there. Um, so you can get over 550 spell power without breaking a sweat. Round about 550 spell power, uh, Flurry Axe with its effective 1.3 weapon speed starts outperforming DPS wise Hungry Cold. I figured that out once uh, for PvP, it was actually kind of ter terrifying. Because um, I was in an era and I was like, oh, is there any weapon upgrade for me in, in Nax, like, at all? And then I calculated it and I was like, oh, I guess the answer is no. <laughs> Terrible. So Flurry Axe is basically uh, your best weapon forever and ever and ever. Hmm. Um, that does bring up uh, one interesting uh, side note. Um, there is... An advant one of the advantages to going over crit cap with Seal of Martyrdom specifically um, is that uh, you can start using different weapons. So you can start using um, uh, two-second speed weapons, 2.1 um, uh, uh, speed weapons, 2.2 speed weapons. Uh, just because the slower attack doesn't matter because you have so much crit, you're going to have basically uh, maximum uptime whether you like it or not. Don't I don't think that's very viable. If they keep it uh, normalized, that's not really going to work because part of the advantage of the really fast weapon with Seal of Martyrdom is that at 1.3 second speed, she's doing 66% um, 6 uh, spell power. Not spell power, but 66% of the damage is being converted into holy damage. By the time you go up to two seconds, uh, it's going to be like only 40%. So there's diminishing returns to swinging a, a slower uh, a speed weapon, even though in theory that should be one of the um, advantages to going over uh, critical strike cap with SOM is that you can start using the slower and slower weapons, which would let you get the hell out of flurry acts and start wielding a weapon that can actually do some damn damage and not having to rely on hunger and cold. So if they get rid of the normalization, uh, that's going to be a, a thing that that pops up really fast. Uh, don't be surprised if people are swinging, like, Hakari Manslayer or something. Like, two-second speed, proc on hit, yada, yada, yada. 
Oh, right. So, oh, yeah, we, we were doing math. Okay. <clears throat> so, the point is, it's not like... It's not like SOM gets more weapon DPS because you get to use a different weapon than the SOR Paladin build. Uh, it, there's just kind of no way around it. The two of you, you don't have you don't have any more attack power because you're wearing the same gear. Your weapons identical, like everything's identical. The only thing going on is that you have SOM and they have SOR. Like that's literally the only difference. <clears throat> And possibly they have, uh, SOR has a bit more crit behind it, but that's easy enough to get, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, literally, you wear the same gear. I can't stress that enough. You wear the same gear, you wear the same gear. Right now, in Season of Discovery at level 40, uh, one paladin wears spell power gear, and the other paladin wears um, uh, strength, agi, uh, uh, stamina gear. Um, but even if you saw in the previous video, there's like only three pieces of gear that are like different in the entire build. They, they wear almost identical gear. Uh, when you get to level 60, it's going to be basically the same story. You're going to be wearing the same gear. You're going to be using the same weapons. Nothing changes. Anyways, we take that 600 attack power. Uh, I'm just going to assume it gets buffed um, up by, like, kings and 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 horn of Lord Aran and God knows what else. Um, actually, the, the the buffs would even be the same. So let's, let's just... Oh, Jesus. It's so bad. Oh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, 600... I didn't calculate its scaling, if that makes any sense. Uh, oh, we could do it that way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, all right. All right, all right. Okay. Let's do this a completely different way. Th this will be better. Okay, I got it. Because I have done this math before in Classic World of Warcraft. Um, I just never made a video on the subject. Part of that stuff I kept to myself. Okay. So we're going to do a little experiment here. Um, the first is, uh, what are the effects of um, plus 100 strength for, to the SOR build? I mean, by, my bad, the SOM build, Seal of Martyrdom, versus what are the effects of plus 130 spell power? Because like I already tried to explain, um, there's a, like a plus 30% conversion uh, from, from one to the other. Um, for some reason in in the math even though you're going to be wearing identical gear you're all going to have the exact same stats what we're trying to figure out here is is which of these scales harder and why clearly the som paladin is going to scale harder with strength than the sor paladin will scale with strength and the sor paladin will scale harder with spell power than um, than the SOM Paladin, right? We've already established that. But the question is, um, which one scales harder in the grand scheme of things? Um, <laughs> all right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to factor in uh, the fact that uh, we have kings. Um, bada bing, bada boom. Ah, oh, that's, but this has Sanctity Aura. Damn. <laughs> Uh, uh, all right, we'll just do them both. And then times 1.1 again, because we have um, the uh, plus uh, uh, this thing, Divine Might. All right, cool. Bring back up the calculators. Try to be as realistic as possible. I will factor in Sanctitura. So go 1.1 over here. Okay, cool. So we brought in, you know, some of the outside multipliers that um, are going to be responsible, just in case somebody comes at me in the comment section and says I didn't actually uh, do my uh, proper job. Let's turn this into attack power. Multiply it by 2. All right, cool. Let's divide by 14. Uh, what am I trying? That That's just, that's DPS. Right. So I need that for, ugh. let's go back here. Come back to me. All right, so we need 242 times 0.3. Boom. So this is the amount of spell power we gain is 72.6. So you can see we have half the spell power of, of the SOR Paladin, um, which is not good. <clears throat> uh, we also gained 17-ish uh, uh, DPS, and uh, we're going to turn that into... Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. I'm going to ignore the white damage gains, and the reason why I'm going to ignore the white damage gains is because, theoretically, you're wearing the exact same gear. So I'm just going to look at Seal of Martyrdom and what the hell they do. That that, that might be bad. 
All right, whatever. Um, Seal of Martyrdom is going to take uh, 0.6666, like a third of this, um, and just be raw DPS. And then we got to take this spell power and we got to multiply it by a 0.27 because that's its our ratio. So it's taking all the spell power gains from all that strength, plus kings, plus all the other stuff, and it's turning it into almost 20 DPS. And then we're going to add, uh, this is SOM's uh, contribution to it. This is SOM's contribution without critical strike chance being factored. Um, uh, I, I could probably factor it in real fast, uh, but then you hit your ca hit cap at like 15%. Whatever, I'm just going to multiply this by like 1.1 and assume that Seal of Casino uh, takes the rest. Um, uh, uh, you have trouble hitting a boss, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to give you a 10% bonus um, to that. Okay. Now let's just add uh, 20 uh, to this and, and scrape off the rest and just say it's 32 for the sake of my sanity. Um, and then, of course, I need the white DPS gains. Oh, my God. What were the white DPS gains? Uh, 242 uh, divided by 14 equals times 0.7. This is uh, an armor damage reduction equals... Um, let's multiply it by critical strike. Maybe you have 2%, 20% critical strike with the build. All right, cool. We'll add 14.5. Oh, yeah. So you can see that everything factored in, um, that 100 strength, uh, only gets us to like plus 46.5 DPS. Um, it's also important to note, uh, let me take that number really fast here, 46.5, uh, 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 minus, it's 14.5, right? Yeah, I think that was the critical strike. Yes, okay, okay. We're minusing the white damage from this. That's important uh, from a, a, a TPS perspective, right? A, a threat per second. So when you're in max build, you're going to have Improved Righteous Fury, which means uh, this is going to be a 2.2 multiplier. And then I have to come back here and add 14.5. So now I'm doing TPS over here. Okay, so this thing almost has 85 uh, a t uh, threat per second gain from that 100 strength. So we converted 100 strength into 85 uh, a threat per second. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, but it's only worth um, uh, 46.5 DPS. Um, and then this one is incredibly easy. We take this number and we go 0.45 because that's the ratio. Oh, look, it's much higher than this one over here. Um, this thing is entirely spell damage. Like, all of it is spell damage. There's no white damage gains in here whatsoever because we just increased uh, the spell power in the grand scheme of things. And then, of course, we multiply that by 2.2 uh, to get uh, TPS. And you can see the difference in the TPS right there. Um, the point is that no matter how you look at it, um, the spell power is scaling um, from a threat per second perspective way, way, way harder than um, SOM um, is even with its like you know weird little uh, with, with all of its little buggy gains, which is which is kind of fascinating. What do I mean by buggy gains? Well, it says it does 40% weapon damage, but it got normalized, so when you use the fastest weapon possible, it's 66% uh, weapon damage. Um, the other one is that it's double procking um, um, all kinds of things, including uh, Art of War. Okay, that's interesting. And Seal of Righteousness isn't doing that. Um, also, um, when you there's also, the, of course, the gross factor that Seal of Righteousness is probably double procking um, uh, Wind Fury. Um, and uh, Seal of Martyrdom, based on her mechanics, is not double procking uh, Wind Fury because um, SOR does double proc things. Um, yeah, it, it, it just gets worse. Um, the point is, is that um, SOR is going to scale a hell of a lot harder with spell power than SOM is going to scale with attack power. And it just, it just is what it is. Okay. And you can't also say the inverse of this, which is, well, SOM will scale harder with spell power than SOR will. We already proved that that's not the case. And then it gets even dumber when you start trying to say things like, uh, well, um, what if, because uh, this, is, this is literally the what if scenario. This was the scenario of what if I could customize my gear in Classic WoW to such an extent where I could choose to wear 100 strength 
um, as opposed to its equivalent in, in spell power gains, which would be 130% spell power. What if I could make that trade in classic World of Warcraft? And you can see here the SOR Paladin is clearly coming out on top, and it's not even close. It is disgustingly not even close as far as, as the scaling is concerned. Grotesquely not even close in favor of, of Seal of Righteousness. Um, however, that's not going to happen because of those damn mechanics that we talked about before, um, where you're going to be wearing the same gear. You're going to want um, the uh, the uh, strength. You're going to want uh, uh, the the, sta uh, the stamina, and you're going to want the spell power. And we can like be almost fully kitted out in gear that's lit not even almost. We can literally be fully kitted out in gear that's just strength, stamina, intellect, strength, stamina, intellect, strength, stamina, intellect, and. Um, out of curiosity, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. okay, so let's do another weird little experiment here. So let me pull up another calculator. So out of curiosity, I want to see if SOM, Seal of Martyrdom, um, scales harder with... Uh, uh, strength, attack power, than she does with spell power. Because I'm going to be amused if SOM actually scales harder with spell power than she does with strength. So we'll just do that real fast. So 130, this was what it was with 100 strength. 100 strength for TPS. So now we're going to take a 130. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, this didn't uh, factor in a seal of, um, what is it? Sanctity Aura. Okay, so this number should actually be higher. So it's probably closer to like uh, 90 TPS in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, my bad. So, if I give Sanctity Aura over here, I have to give Sanctity uh, Aura over there, obviously. So, uh, my bad. Um, it's it's still not even close. It's just, it's just absolutely disgusting. Um, let's do it over here. Uh, we'll factor in Sanctity Aura right out the gate. I'll take it, this, and go point, uh, 0.27. Bada bing, bada boom. I'll multiply that by 2.2. And, yeah, as you can see, um, she is barely not scaling any harder with strength than she is with spell power. Um, in fact, those numbers are, are grotesquely close together. Um, so yeah, er, all, everything just basically points to the fact that you're going to be wearing uh, strength, stamina, spell power gear, uh, strength, stamina, spell power gear. Uh, but let's just do, um, the only other question to really ask on the subject of tanking is what do things look like when you're like fully world buffed and kitted out? Um, because in the grand scheme of things, you'll have something stupid, like a uh, 30% critical strike chance. Um, God, Lord knows you might be like um, uh, 1,200 uh, uh, attack power. Um, I do know that your spell power uh, goes absolutely through the roof um, when you're fully kitted out. And keep in mind, um, why? Because uh, your base gear has like 460. Uh, that's not even true. Uh, your base gear has like 460 spell power, and then I didn't add like uh, uh, certain items like uh, 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 fire, like Choker of the Fire Lord. Okay, that adds 34 spell power to the damn thing, and then uh, there's a multiple rings that have like 25 spell power on it. So you'd end up with like uh, 50 spell power plus, uh, what is this, 32, 34, uh, 34 spell power. What are you doing? Eh. Uh, 50 plus 34 equals plus uh, 460 equals. Yeah, so that tier 2 build, if it wasn't a PvP suit, would be running around with something stupid like uh, 544 spell power. That's assuming it, you can't find um, a strength, stamina, uh, spell power, uh, neck piece, strength, stamina, spell power uh, rings for the damn thing, which would be uh, far more ideal. Um, then you have uh, something stupid like uh, improved righteous, uh, uh, the improved righteous judgments, like 220 spell power, like God help us all. Um, yeah, so, and then the, the I think it's the, uh, the flask gives you like another plus 120 spell power. And then you're looking at world buffs, oh God, uh, world buffs and elixirs and all this other stupid stuff is probably going to give you like another 200 spell power or something like that. You're going to have like 1100 spell power uh, without even breaking a sweat. And and very uh, so by the time you're done comparing like 1100 spell power to uh, um, versus like you know uh, 1200 uh, attack uh, 
1200 attack power that you're getting from uh, all the buffs and so forth and so on. I can already tell you right now which Paladin is going to win out, and the answer is going to be, it's, it's going to be the SOR Paladin. Um, Seal of Martyrdom is just not scaling anywhere near uh, hard enough as, as Seal of Righteousness is in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, so the math is, is really fascinating. And the TLDR is at level 40 with current gear, um, only now at level 40 with current gear um, are the two builds fascinatingly close. You flash forward to level 50, to level 60, to level 60 and beyond, and de unless Blizzard wants... It, it's, just, it's just not going to happen. All right, here's the last thing I can possibly do to prove how weird the scenario is. Let's see, if you recall correctly, that SOM build uh, generated about 90 TPS per second, right? 90 TPS per, per second for 100 strength. Let's see what the SOR Paladin does uh, with the same amount of strength. 1 equals times 1.1 equals, okay, uh, times 2 equals, uh, times uh, 0.3 equals, yeah, yeah, 242. Two. Another calculator here. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, I want 0.45 of that. No, nah, come on, bro. Come on. Ugh. 100 times 1.1 equals times 1.1 equals times 2 equals, uh, you know, divided by, uh, no, 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 no. Clear, clear, clear. What was it like? 242? Two? Yeah. Uh, times 0.3. It's that much spell power. I could have saved myself a million years and just did this. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, 0.725, uh, right? Just save yourself a million years of, of trying to math it out and just use the damn ratio I already established. Oh, God. Uh, let me just double check. I'm right about this. Oh, uh, no. There's kings. Uh, there is divine might. There's me turning it into attack power. There is me taking 30% of that. And what do you know, Joe? It's like literally 0.725. Like, yeah, okay. Thank God. Thank God I can do math. Jesus. All right, that's our spell power. Uh, now I want to take 0.45 of that. So that's how much DPS is flowing out of us from uh, SOR and everything just from the spell power of all that damn strength. And then, of course, of course the, the white TPS gains are, are basically going to be non-existent, right? <clears throat> uh, white uh, TPS gains. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Two four two was the spell power divided by fourteen equals. Um, I'll say, assume you have a ten percent critical strike. Uh, no, we assumed it was a twenty percent critical strike for the other build. The SOR, the SOR definitely benefits from a higher critical strike chance. Uh, times point. Uh, so we'll assume it's it's two five because SOR does benefit more. From, from Critical Strike, you at least want 5% more crit with the SOR build. Okay, cool. Let's take the armor uh, from that. Assume a 30% armored target. And that's just going to be raw DPS. And that's just going to be a raw TPS. So over here, we go 2.2 equals. And then I add uh, basically 72. Okay, cool. 87. All right. <clears throat> so as you can see, um, the... The SOR Paladin is almost synergizing uh, in TPS terms, threat per second terms, as much as the SOM Paladin. The SOM Paladin barely outscales um, the SOR Paladin as far as TPS is concerned from strength alone. And then the fact that she overscales with the spell power just basically um, put, put, it puts the argument to rest at the end of the day, right? Um, because, again, you're going to be wearing the exact same gear. <clears throat> and that gear is going to be strength, stamina, spell power. Strength, stamina, spell power. Strength, stamina, spell power. And uh, if they scale almost identically off of the strength, and one of them scales, like, at 50% more, um, uh, yeah, literally, like, like plus 50% more, more than that, like, plus 60% um, harder off of the spell power than the other one does, um, you can see at the end of the day, um, the SOR build is, is just going to win out.
in the grand scheme of things. She's just going to win, and there's there's no way around it. It doesn't uh, help that uh, Blizzard decided to um, fix an issue. <laughs> they didn't call it a bug. They called it an issue where SOR rank 3 uh, had more spell power ratio behind it than the other uh, ranks of SOR. If you're curious what the difference of that is, um, it literally just means that uh, um, SOR 3 uh, with a Flurry Axe uh, does about like a, a 5 damage um, on hit. And um, the rank 8 version of it does uh, like, like 22 more damage uh, than that. So she does like, like 27 damage. But the difference is uh, one seal costs you uh, 660 mana, and the other seal costs you 200 mana. One costs you 160 to seal and judge, and the other one costs you 300 mana to seal and judge. Um, but since judgment is a huge part of the SOR rotation, you definitely want to try to use your SOR rank 8. Um, but the point is, is that she's got like 22 more damage um, just, just magically, uh, for no good reason. And if you start, uh, doing the spell power ratio, like how much spell power, um, does that give you in the grand scheme of things? It's actually a, a, a pretty sizable chunk. Like it's, it's over a hundred, um, for sure. Uh, when, when, when you look at it, oh, no, she just scales harder. There's just no way around it. Uh, once you, once you get uh, strength, stamina, spell power gear, that's also one of the reasons that it's being limited, uh, right now at current level. Um, so for example, this build here, you have the hazard gear. I actually still have, um, the spell power variant build. So let's go to dwarf. Yeah. He's wearing the spell power version, uh, 114 spell power, uh, uh two, two set, uh, shock forged. Um, hazard leg plates, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see here in BFD, we, we have um, the conversion. Let's look at the hazard boots by comparison. Is it going to bug out on me? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can see here, uh, this one has 13 strength and uh, uh, 12 stamina, and this one has uh, stamina, intellect, and then spell power. Stam, int, spell power, uh, uh, strength, spell power are, are your choices. Um, that's a very um, classic choice uh, uh, for, for, for paladin builds. We already talked about this. But in the future, there, there isn't a choice. Your gear is literally strength, stamina, spell power, strength, stamina, spell power, strength, stamina, spell power. So one of the reasons why SOR and SOM are performing so closely at level 40 is because it the gearing forces you to choose between these two options. It's like, do you want strength, stamina, and critical strike? Or do you want uh, stamina, intellect, uh, stamina, spell power? Pick one is basically what they're saying. But once you get up to like, you know, tier two and be an Avengers and beyond, it's not pick one anymore. It's literally, hey, just have it all. It's literally have it all. <laughs> and once they start throwing around all of it, math kicks in and SOR just wins. And she wins hard. Um, so anyways, this video was was much longer than I hope it would. Uh, I initially wanted it to be. I was hoping it would be like, you know, a quick 10 minute video of me trying to explain all this stuff. The problem is it's just too nuanced and, and too detailed. And, you know, me, I'll blather on forever. It just is what it is. <clears throat> but yeah, the scaling is real and uh, really real and uh, definitely is the future. Um. Yeah, let's do talents real fast here. I'll kick it up to level 36 just so I can show those talents again. So, yeah, you'll you'll put 31 points in there, but uh, you'll end up with, like, you know, five points in readout, three points in precision, like two points in toughness. Maybe you do garden's favor. You put three points in there, so you got 13. Uh, da, 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 improved might, maybe you go improved might. Uh, benedictions, probably better. You put two points in there, you've got seven, and you're going to have exactly 31 uh, talent points uh, left over. Definitely get improved um, SOR. It won't really matter because you come back to divine intellect anyways. Definitely picking up uh, um, uh, uh, um, consecration. Yes, putting one point in lasting judgments in case we have to run around like a dumbass. I'm definitely taking the anti-fear in case it gets useful. I have no... I'll put one point in there. Uh, put five points in there and like one point in there. And you can see that that's the talent build. So any tank that's basically not this build in classic World of Warcraft in the future is, for SOR at least, is probably doing it wrong. And if they're pretending to be an SOM paladin, um, smack them in the head because they're also doing it wrong.
uh, because uh, the power of math compels you. But you can see you got your three points in Improved Righteous Fury. You have uh, your Improved Judgment is now uh, eight second cooldown. Consecrations, uh, like eight second cooldown, like a 50% spell power ratio. Consecrations on an eight second cooldown with a 35% spell power ratio. And then Exorcism and Holy Shock are, of course, doing what Exorcism and, and Holy Shock uh, do best. Um, and then, yeah, that's just GG's. So the TLDR and all of this is uh, Pally Time is Right and SOR is the Future. Um, 100%, and, uh, the only, the only thing remotely holding her back right now, um, is, uh, there is no strength, um, stamina, uh, spell power gear available to Paladin at current level. Uh, if Blizzard ever screws up and starts giving that to us, um, uh, and they will, because they don't have a choice, um, then SOR just wins. Um, other fun facts are, uh... They kind of have to give it to us um, because, believe it or not, these these TPS numbers are apparently uh, rather low. So there's a, a paladin in my guild right now that people are, are saying um, in raid uh, does between 600 and 700 uh, a DPS, um, which is nuts. He, like With like Crowd Manual, Pummeler, and Art of War, and SOM, and all that stuff, he does like uh, almost 700 DPS. Um, I find that... Um, Unbelievably hard to believe, um, but theoretically possible, I guess. I just don't know. It's, it's just like Jesus. Are, are you for sure? Are you real? That that sounds like madness. Hmm. But if I take that seven hundred, and um, I want to the the times point six 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 six. So assume you put um, what's it called? Blessing of sanctuary on him. Uh, you can see that these paladins currently at level 40 can barely hold TPS on him. Barely, barely hold TPS on this guy. And by the time you, uh, we were looking at logs, uh, me and the one tank guy that I did a pally cast with uh, recently, uh, we were looking at logs of like knacks on patchwork. And uh, warriors were getting up to like 2,000 uh, DPS. And at that point, it's just like, well, how much TPS do you need to even, like, you know, uh, maintain it? And the answer is, you know, um, uh, yeah, you need a lot. Hmm. But let's just do it real fast, because we can, because it's SOR. So let's say you do get up to, like, 1,200 spell power. Uh, how much uh, um, TPS is that for the SOR Paladin? The math is really easy. Um, so we'll just do that really fast. So you're going to have 450 uh, 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 TPS just from your spell power alone. We multiply that by 2.2 because they're already giving us a 2.2 multiplier. You can see we're starting to close in on that 400 that we need. And then all the base damage on our abilities and, and, and everything flowing out of us and like the extra um, – because uh, that 1,200 – <laughs> that 1200 spell power is what you have before I factor in the fact that you also have a, like plus 600 attack power um, going into uh, uh, spell power. Uh, so yeah, I can add like 1200 to that equals and then I multiply that by 0.45 because that's the ratio and then I times that by the uh, threat per second multiplier and you can see congratulations we're actually um, as it stands able to hold threat on these stupid um, uh, Nax scared paladins in era and barely it's not it's it's a barely hold uh, TPS on them as well so it's just like Jesus so it's kind of like thank God we scale this hard because uh, we're gonna struggle to hold threat on Nax geared arrow war uh, a fury warriors and rogues as is let alone uh, sod uh, warriors and rogues so um welcome to the future i guess hmm. without greater busting a king spam that is but anyways uh hopefully that math is useful for you guys um lord knows if you're sor tanking that that um spell power conversion will be incredibly useful to, uh for you um, a point, uh, basically 45% of your spell power uh, ratio um, gets translated directly into um, raw DPS, like holy DPS into the target. And you multiply it by uh, your, your threat um, modifier. All right, well, this video has gone on way too long. Uh, and uh, Deus Hope, boys.